Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. Yogi is fast asleep over here. He fell asleep that quickly? He's He's such a freak. He's in his, like, I go to sleep, I wake up, I go to sleep, I wake up mode. See, there he goes. Good thing I took his collar off so he can't jingle jangle for everyone. It's a weird dog. Um, this was kind of a weird day. It's been a long day. I mean, we went down there to the homeless encampments down there on uh, Santa Ana Riverbed. Yes, that was the thing we did today. We walked that entire thing a couple times. Oh, we're massively disgusted. It was so disorganized. Yes. And... Not from the standpoint of the, uh, what do you call it, the sheriff's department, but from the standpoint of the county itself. Yeah. And, like, the fact that they hadn't um, given uh, prior notice to these people, that says a lot. Like, people have no clue what was going on. Yeah, how do you expect to evict an entire riverbed full of homeless people, what, 800 and something people, and not give them any notice? Yeah. I don't get it at all. It's like, what do they think? I just don't get what they're thinking. I don't think they are thinking. I think that's probably the problem. Well, yeah. It's like they were criticized just a few years back for not having vision when it comes to the mental health issues. Right. And that, they don't have you know, vision when it comes to this vision either. Vision is so. leadership. You know, in right. order for there to be a vision, there has to be a plan. And they clearly, as we learned from Dummy Spitzer today, have yeah, no plan. That guy. That guy. Wow. We could do a whole entire... We were talking about a short episode on Saturday. We could do a whole episode on Saturday with the amount of idiots that you are could, around here. You could do an entire episode on just Todd Spitzer. Yeah. No doubt. So, tell me what your first impression was when we walked up there. Eh. Why are there so many people awake at this hour of the day? I don't know. It That was... Completely a joke, obviously, because, you know. Sure. Um, I don't know. It didn't seem nearly as bad as all the lunatics on the internet make it sound. Yeah. The lunatics on the internet make it sound like they've built, like, 93 dump piles. Yeah. I agree. And, and while there was trash, and while I understand they've done a little bit of cleanup in the last few weeks, there wasn't nearly the trash that people insist is there agreed totally agreed that was my first impression yeah i think i think that people they have a valid point that you know these people aren't supposed to be there you know they are trespassing it's got signs posted when they're open right and they're staying there all the time okay I, I get that but who has to accept responsibility for them being there and that has to lie at the foot of the supervisors because they were supposed to come up with a way to have cheaper, more affordable housing. And they're the ones who should have been enforcing the trespassing laws along that riverbed trail. Right. So, and they didn't enforce those laws. And you know that the sheriff, they're almost like, I'm not saying this disrespectfully, but sheriffs are like with military like precision robots. You know, they're like military robots. They just do what they're programmed to do. And you know that if it was up to the sheriff, they would have taken care of business on all that stuff. Um, yeah. But the question. supervisors asked the sheriff, because they can't direct the sheriff, but right. asked the sheriff to cooperate and not push the issue. Well, I have a question. 
Okay. We saw the open hours of the River Trail Mm -hmm. posted today. Okay. Is it illegal for them to pitch their tent there and sleep there during the day? No. Just at night? Yes. Just when the park is closed? Yes. So they easily could just switch up their life schedules, sleep during the day wherever the heck they want, and mill about at night? Yeah. How is that a better solution for anybody except for them? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. That answers my question. But yeah, that's what that's truthfully the situation. But I have to say, you know, I'm gonna put a put a shout out there. The sheriff's department was right on today. Like they weren't they weren't coming in like a giant brute of force army. No, they seem to be arriving slowly and spreading themselves out quite a lot. Yep, and then like you, they were approachable. You could talk to them. Yes. Um, I mean, our first interaction at the far end down by Ball was at that campground where the guy was um, talking to the sheriff. And that sheriff was super nice. Well, then, in that situation, my, we missed the first at least half of Easily. the issue. Mm-hmm. And my bet is when that sheriff walked up, that guy was really angry. Yep. Because he was still visibly irritated. When yeah. we got there. Yeah. But I think that the I sheriff and the way that he handled everything really he de-escalated, de-escalated the it. situation. Yeah, he did a great job. And that's that's why I say, like, <clears throat> I was impressed with what I saw. But that's why I say, they're so well trained and they're so, you know, military precision that they would easily take out a threat like that. Yeah. I agree. It also seemed like there was a lot of service people there. Yes. Assisting. Yep. And that's good, too. For sure. Well, people have to help other people. It's really the only way, right? I think what would have been an asset today is if maybe one maybe one of the advocacy organizations had been able to arrange a couple of semis. Yeah. And been like, we are going to provide you storage. We will tag your stuff, tag and bag your stuff, and we'll store it for you for, like, 60 days or something. Yeah, I totally agree Because when they made the comments that the city, that the city or county or whoever was doing it, would only store your stuff if it was necessity of life stuff. Yeah. Well, I feel like when you're homeless, the things you have are all necessity of life things. Yeah. Because what if they were selling those things and that was the only way that they were affording food? Yeah, like who cares if they have multiples of something? Maybe they have multiples of it so that they can sell some of them to make money. Right. And of course, there's always the insinuation that they have multiples of something because they stole the others. No, they might have found a really good sale. Exactly. Or sometimes you buy stuff, you can't tell from a distance, but you buy stuff from Dollar Tree. It looks just like something you'd buy at Target. But you buy a couple of them because they're so cheap. Right. And then those people that were down at the very end, the people that I made the comment that it looked like they'd lived in an apartment and just become homeless and yes. that's where they went. Well, they're not going to be a, they're going to lose what's left of what they had when they lost their apartment. Yeah. Like they had a couch and they had a rocking chair sitting there. That's just going to get dumped. It's going to go in the trash now. Yep. And I don't think that's okay. So I think it would have been nice if somebody would have been able to put together something like that. And I honestly feel like three or four of the 63-foot trucks would have done it. Yeah. I think so, too. And they could have even just parked them at the end and then helped people transport their things into them. If they'd have done it systematically with, like, labels, it would have been okay. And Agreed. I think that would have been a nice addition. Well, I agree, because they could have printed up barcodes, too. Mm-hmm. And just beep, 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 beep. And you'd know exactly whose stuff went where. I don't know. It's smart. But then, but then, so all the things were good and surprising in a good way. Or really sad because of what we just talked about. And then there was the angry. Yup. 
I can't even. I can't even fathom the absolute jackassery that we witnessed from Todd the dumbass Spitzer. Well, and by the reaction of the majority of the homeless people, they agree. They agree that he's full of crap. Well, because he's the one who's saying they haven't taken the off many offers of services. That's just bullshit because they didn't get offered services. The lady that was interviewing him as you looked on right. after all of the shit happened with him, she was interviewing a homeless person who had just gotten through that massive ass line. Okay. And she asked him, like, what had they done for him? And he said he got a motel voucher, he'd gotten something else, and he was just so excited because he's been homeless for over a year and unable to access any sort of services, including his social security that he was unable to access until he'd already been homeless for nine months. That's just disgusting. It's his social security. Yes. He should have been able to have that from day one. That's why it's disgusting. Exactly. And he said that today was the first time he was offered any kind of services from the county and he's lived in the riverbed the entire time. And that's my point. So what, was he just hiding from the people that offered him services in the riverbed? No. You want to know what's probably the case? He probably lived closer to the middle. Yep. So no one ever got to him. And they asked like four people on the ends. They were like, get away from me, you scary invader. And yeah. (coughs) Yep. I agree with you. Yep. I think that's exactly what happened. They just did just enough to get by. They did just enough so that if somebody came asking, they could ask the first five or six people. They'd say, yes, we were offered services. And that's it. But that's why I have to say I respect the sheriff's department and how they're handling it. They're methodically going one campsite to the next campsite to the next campsite. Giving people bags, helping them pack their things. Yeah. But it's very methodical. They don't miss a thing. It's just interesting you know, to watch. Well executed. Yeah. But Spitzer, you know, sat there and spit out his lies and made all the stories up. And that's the thing. Those people are down there living it every day. They know what the truth is. They know how many times the county's been down there to offer help to them. They know this. It's not something they need to think about. They just know it. What I can't quite get past was the woman who defended him. Yeah. Claiming, well, and I don't, she was passionate enough about it that I don't doubt She's received a crap load of assistance from him specifically. Sure. Well, what I was thinking was, what did he do? Pick pick a pet project from the riverbed and, like, get her out of there and give her all of his help so that he'd have a homeless person who'd live there to defend him? Because that's what it came off like. Really? Yogi agrees. It's true. I mean, and then to show up in a pinstripe, a black pinstripe suit with a white shirt and a tie. Yeah. With a giant, not the small little name badge, a giant placard name badge that has Todd Spitzer, Orange County Supervisor. Given the exact same situation a year from now, you're an Orange County Supervisor. What do you show up wearing? Well, first of all, let's ask a question. Is it in my district or outside of my district? It's outside of your district. Guess what? It doesn't matter. You're not going to be there. I'm going to be there. Okay. And I'm going to show up and I'm going to wear jeans and a polo shirt. And probably a small name tag. If a name tag at all. So that people know that they can ask you questions. If a name tag at all. But yeah, something to let them know that I'm at least... Connected to the supervisor's office, right? And i I could also I could also get behind wearing like an Orange County government jacket. Sure, sure, yeah. But I wouldn't be in a pinstripe pinstripe suit, suit and like 
Italian leather shoes. Like, come on now. Come on now. And I think it's why, but I think it's why it's people closer to our situation that are willing to help people like that. It's because we know what it feels like to be like them, where you struggle a little bit and then you do a little bit better, then you struggle a little bit. You know, we know what that feels like. Yeah. And we just did that whole thing about how the last 12 months has been kind of difficult and why. You know, we just did that episode not that long ago. Well, exactly. And then, and then to just back to Spitzer because I wasn't done being angry. Mm-hmm. To just when he when you're asked a question, and you very obviously either don't want to answer because your answer is ridiculous, or or you don't have an answer at all because you're too small minded to have thought of it, i.e. What are these people going to do after 30 days? Yeah. He ran away. Yep. He ran away. You know what people like that And that person made that comment that proves how obvious it was. Asked him, was he on the track team because he sure was a good runner. Yeah. And I don't generally, I don't generally sass people that I've never spoken to. It's really not in my nature. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is in my nature. I think I sassed him more loudly than you did. But here's the thing. For me, you know, just talking about behavior-wise, for me, this is a guy that stood up there and lied. He made hand gestures of, like, being authoritarian. He made claims about the homeless people that was completely false. And instead of, you know, explaining how they hadn't offered any services, he said, well, I can't make them accept the many offers of services that we've given them. And I can't stop them from injecting heroin. And I can't stop them from injecting meth. I'm surprised more people didn't overhear and get unreasonably offended. So then I got that made me a little angry, you know, standing there. Just a little. And I was like waiting there to say something to him when he was done with the interview, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to interrupt the interview or anything of that nature. And then he kept talking about how the, the governor needs to declare a state of emergency and how that would enable him to fix the problem. And so then that's when I asked him, what would you do? What's, as soon as you find out the governor declares a state of emergency, what's the first thing that you do? He didn't have an answer. That tells you he does not have an end game to this. Well, and it's very interesting that one person speaking up and asking the question prompted all of the other people who were standing around him, except for his campaign manager, to berate him with questions. Yeah. Because they were all standing there getting more and more irritated by the bullshit he was spewing out his mouth. Yep. Me included. Me included. It was brutal to listen to. Yes. And he's just disgusting. The lies that come out of that mouth are just, I I don't know. I can't take it. I just cannot. He's a very fitting politician. Yeah. Yeah, he is. But he's a disgusting pile of slime. Well, or a puddle of spit, if you will. You know, he's not a well liked supervisor. Never really has been. He's kind of been the butt of a lot of jokes. As in, I just called him a puddle of spit. Sure, or like when you talk about how you wanted to go see what he looked like, and you tried at the street fair, but he wasn't there at his booth. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> now. A year from I now, I said that. a year from now, same situation. If I'm on that board, I'm there for the entire weekend. Right. I come home when it's over and go to sleep, and I go back there to open the thing up again. Probably barring a couple of bathroom breaks. Right. But, but I that's think the thing. your constituents will forgive the bathroom breaks. But, but that's the thing, you know. You got to get your ass out there and talk to people. Is Anaheim in his district? Oh yeah. That's the other thing. 
Okay. Okay, we just established that the supervisor for the city of Anaheim was there. Mm-hmm. In his pinstripe suit, looking pretentious and useless. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, was it not five Orange County supervisors that made this decision about this piece of riverbed? Allegedly, yeah. Is there not riverbed in Huntington Beach and Fountain Valley? Yeah. And other cities as well? Yeah. And that is not Puddle of Spitz District. Yeah. Yep, you're right. Although... Yeah, well. I know. But she's not listening and I don't care, so there's they don't, that. They don't um, have very thick skin. No, they're very sensitive. <clears throat> as was evidenced by him today. I've he, never seen such snowflakey politicians. He was, like, offended by the questions. I don't know. It now, was, let's... It was pretty weird. Donald Trump has been made fun of for all sorts of things. Small yeah. hands, bad hair, yeah, bad attitude. If you, like, saw him somewhere and he was within earshot and you, like, yelled at him that his suit was stupid, my bet is he'd probably be like, who the fuck is that? And he'd just keep walking. Yeah. Maybe get this crazy guy away from me who's yelling about my suit. <laughs> exactly. But exactly. he wouldn't get all butthurt and then, like, try to stand there and make jokes about it. Which is exactly what he did. You know how I feel about people who laugh when I'm angry. Yeah. That's why he got sassed twice. Oh my god, Yogi Howell, do it, do it. He deserved it. I know. He's just absolutely asinine. And what a jerk off. I don't have any jokes about the other three supervisors. I'm going to have to come up with some. (laughs) Well, you know, too, that... Spitzer was patting himself and the rest of the board on the back at the last Board of Supervisors meeting, saying what a great job they've all been doing. Is it inappropriate to go to a supervisor's meeting and, like, loudly talk under your breath, bashing the supervisors? Well, you you can do that, but during only during the, you know, 12 seconds of public speaking time they let you have. So you'll get thrown out if you chat during the rest of the meeting? Yes, the sheriff will take you away. Away, away, like behind bars, away, or just escort um, you to a quieter on what place. You're saying. Probably just escort you out. So if you went in there and Todd Spitzer was talking about the weekend and how fabulous he was, and you were like, "Yeah, you and your pinstripe suit, you doofus," they wouldn't arrest you; they'd just take you out. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and me personally, I would laugh my ass off if I did that. I'd be like, "Yes." <laughs> Do you think he's the type of person who would recognize a person he'd seen? No. So He doesn't seem to pay attention to much of anything but himself. So I have 12 seconds if we go to a supervisor meeting to say what I want to say to Todd Spitzer. <laughs> Correct. Solid. We need to go to a supervisor meeting. What a dingus. Yep. What a dingus. The guy was just... He was... I don't even know how to describe it. It just makes me laugh thinking about it. Like, he was almost cartoonish. A person that asinine thinks he's qualified to be the district attorney. I know, of a large county. Of a large county. He should be the district attorney of somewhere small that has two people and a cow. I'm sure he can... I'm sure he can handle that. Yeah. But... As for maybe more than that, I doubt as, it. But maybe he should start out as like the city attorney of like, you know, I don't know, Artesia. You know, learn to do the job first. I think he should be the city attorney of Nome, Alaska. There you go. That would work. Because it's far away from here and, and he's small. slimy and maybe his spit would freeze up. <laughs> 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 It spit freezes them. Oh my god. You're funny. I'm going to kill that pig of guineas over there. It's both of them. And they're mad at you. Why? Because you didn't go outside and get them any hay today. Well, that'll be a tomorrow thing. So they have absolutely no food. They have food. There's pellets there. There's none. They ate them all. I'll have to give them some before we go to bed. See? You give me that. There's none. Anyway. I don't know. I think I think the guy is just 
He's a clown. He's special. That's all I can say. He's a special clown. Out of all the times I've seen Donald Trump, the person we know is a giant asinine clown. Exactly. To the point we refer to him as President <clears throat> Orange. <laughs> At the number of times we've seen him speak, he has never been as asinine as Todd Spitzer was today. Exactly. And in fact, you know as well as I do that I've listened to those speeches <laughs> And I'll say to you, well, I agree with what he just said there. Right. At least one thing in every speech I agree with. But that guy, he lied through his teeth today. I couldn't agree with anything he said. And, you know, how do you know he lied? How are you so sure? Well, let's see. There are these people that live there. that have allegedly been offered services over and over and over again. But they can't remember being offered them. But they somehow have never been offered them. And it's not like a small contingency of them. It's, it's like the 98% of them don't remember it. And the others, they just don't even care. Right. So in a sense, of those who would care about being offered services, 100% of those people say they never were offered services. Right. And that's a problem. Who knows? It's a huge problem, though. If anybody at one point or any other point would have to- would tell the freaking truth about what's going on, maybe it would make sense and lead to an actual solution. But when yeah. they constantly lie and say 98% of them don't want any help, they're making the problem worse. worse. Yep. Amen. I agree with you completely on that statement. Dear people who are listening... If you live in Orange County, California, tell your dumbass supervisor that they're making the problem worse with their lies. Exactly right. Got to be transparent. Call them. Always. Be like, yo, asshole, you're making it worse. Especially if it's dumbass Spitzer. Transparency. Tell the truth. That's what leadership is all about. So freaking tired of people calling themselves leaders. And all they do is sit at their stupid desk and lie. Exactly. It's asinine. Absolutely Um, asinine. I think that people people do that, though. They do just exactly well, though, but they do it like as a self preservation kind of a thing. They're trying to prove their own their own worth somehow, and like they fit a group. So they create a lie that creates a group of people and then they mold themselves into that group of person. I feel like he could have easily saved face today and not lied. Yeah. And I feel like best case scenario, a supervisor shows up ready to help wearing appropriate clothing. Yeah. Even if they had on like rubber gloves or whatever. Right. Right. And then when news media comes up, take three seconds to tell them what's going on and then say, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I, I have don't have time for an interview. To help. Exactly. Like, if you were truly helping, you would have been helping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Clearly, it made me a little angry. A little. Just a smidge. <laughs> At least 1% angry. Well,. It's one of those situations where I kind of feel like if it doesn't bother you at least a little bit, then there's something wrong. And I feel like you're going to have to put the explicit tag on this episode. But the guy who you were talking to, who called him a slimy motherfucker. Yep. Multiple times in your conversation. And went on and on about all the reasons that he is a slimy motherfucker. Yep. Was the type of person who doesn't feel like he should use that kind of language in front of a woman. Exactly. So that it shows you that he's an old-fashioned values type of person. Yep. And he's using this language to describe this person. That says a lot. It sure does. It says a lot. Because I feel like old-fashioned values type of people have respect for political figures a lot of the time. True. Very true. Yep. That's all I'm done. Your rant is over? I think so. You sure? Yes.
Okay, this, I think we're signing off here, woman. If I have any more ranting, then the neck vein's coming back. Yeah, I don't know if I want you to do that. <laughs> Night, everyone. It's been fun. Hasta la bye-bye. Hey, this is Mike, and I just wanted to tell you that if you enjoyed the show, and I truly hope you did, you can subscribe on iTunes or Google Play and not miss a single episode. But if you happened to miss an episode uh, and you didn't find it on Google Play or iTunes for some reason, you could go to our website, which is thenightlyrant.wordpress.com.